we've been hearing about self-driving cars a lot in recent years, mostly due to companies like Waymo, GM Cruise, Mobileye, Argo AI, and of course, Tesla. There have been many more companies jumping in on the wagon in recent years, all racing to be the first to achieve full self-driving and getting the biggest slice of the pie. After all, the autonomous ride-hailing platforms are estimated to be worth $2 trillion by 2030. This alone tells how disruptive autonomous cars will be once they're fully utilized on the road. In this video, we will look at the top 5 companies with self-driving technology. But before we hit this show on the road, let's get plugged in. Hello and welcome to EV Source for all things EVs and technology. Before we begin with today's video, I want to give a warm welcome to our newest Patreon producer, John Spencer, aka C Nile. John, thank you for your support. You are amazing. The support that I received from all the patrons is something that I'm grateful for every single day, and I want you to know that your support means a lot to me, and I'm forever grateful for having all of you on the EV Source team. So thanks, guys. You're all amazing people. And now, let's jump right in. Self-driving cars are not a new concept. The idea of self-driving cars has been floating around for almost 100 years. In the 1920s, Houdini radio controls showed off a radio-controlled car called American Wonder. In the 1930s, General Motors sponsored an exhibition called Futurama with radio-controlled cars using electromagnetic fields. In the 50s, RCA labs introduced cars guided by wires and embedded circuits in the roadway. Things stayed the same until the 1980s when we saw vision-guided systems from Mercedes-Benz that used LiDAR, computer vision, and robot control. In the 1990s, tests continued with the same technology across the US with Carnegie Mellon University's NavLab project driving cross-country 98% autonomously. Fast forward to 2009, we see Google jump into the autonomy game with their Google X Lab self-driving project, which in 2016 was spun off as a separate entity known as Waymo. And since then, many startups have emerged to make self-driving cars a reality. But there is a major difference in the way companies are approaching to solve this problem compared to Tesla. Most companies are using LiDAR and a number of sensors to allow the car to navigate on its own in the world. A LiDAR is a surveying method that measures the distance to a target by illuminating the target with laser light and measuring the reflected light with a sensor. Differences in laser return times and wavelengths can then be used to make digital 3D representations of the target. In this case, that is the world around the car. Tesla, on the other hand, does not use LiDAR. Instead, they use cameras and a forward-facing radar to handle most of the autonomous driving. Tesla's approach to solving computer vision is much harder and will take longer to achieve, but it does have its benefits compared to a LiDAR-based system. LiDAR, in my opinion, is like taking a shortcut to autonomy but missing some of the crucial steps that make the car truly capable of driving itself in every circumstance imaginable without ever needing human intervention. It's more like automated driving on a predetermined, well-mapped environment, whereas autonomous driving is closer to human driving. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of each system. LiDAR is good at accurately measuring the distance of objects, but it can't tell the difference between a plastic bag on the road or a tire. On a vision-based system, however, self-driving AI can be trained to tell the difference between a tire and a plastic bag. Now, this is just one example. The real world is much more complex and unpredictable than that. LiDAR can create a 3D map of the world and it works well at night as well. LiDAR is safe, fast and works well in light weather such as light rain and fog. But the downside is that it's very costly. The initial LiDAR systems used in Waymo vehicles cost over $75,000 per vehicle. Today, the price has come down tenfold and costs around $7,500. It's still very expensive compared to cameras that cost less than $100. LiDAR also gets blocked by extreme weather such as heavy rain or snowfall. Also, it has moving parts which can be a problem in extreme weather conditions like the Arctic winter. And then there's the aesthetics which aren't really appealing to look at. And when it comes to making the car more aerodynamic and lighter, this thing on the top of the vehicle is not really helping. Cameras, on the other hand, 
are small and can be embedded almost anywhere. Before we get into details, it's important to understand the different levels of autonomy. There are six levels. Level zero is no automation, which is most cars on the road today. Level one is driver assistance with adaptive cruise control that automatically adjusts the vehicle speed to maintain a safe distance from vehicles ahead. Level two is partial automation, which enables a vehicle to assist with steering, accelerating and braking, but you still have to pay attention to the road at all times. This is where most modern vehicles that have some kind of automation fall today. For instance, Tesla's Autopilot and GM's Cadillac with Super Cruise. It's basically lane assistance and adaptive cruise control. Level three is conditional automation. The driver is still required, but they don't have to keep their eyes on the road. The car can handle almost everything. Level 4 is high automation. The car can completely drive itself in almost every situation, but the driver may still be required in certain circumstances. Level 5 is full automation. This is where a driver is not required at any point and cars can be seen roaming around the roads by themselves. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at where these companies are today. Currently, the top five companies racing to get autonomous cars on the road for widespread public use are Waymo, GM Cruise, Argo AI, Mobileye, and Tesla. There are a number of other startups such as Zooks, Neuro, Aptiv, AutoX, Baidu, Kama AI, and many more that are at least as far down the road as several of the top five companies named above. By the way, Kama AI is open source and the founder was almost hired to work with Tesla at one point. But this is a story for another video. Waymo has been operating independently since 2016 and operates currently only in Phoenix. They have approximately 600 vehicles in their fleet currently and they've mapped an area of about 100 square miles using LiDAR, which is geofenced so the vehicles can't operate outside this zone. Waymo currently operates at level 4 and has a driver behind the wheel to take over in case of an emergency. They do, however, have 5-10% to of the vehicles operating without a driver for a select few who signed an NDA. And as we've just learned, Waymo will operate at level 5 for the next several weeks. Almost every Waymo ride in the Phoenix area will be without a backup driver. However, these vehicles are limited to a 50 square mile geofenced area. Later this year, Waymo will reintroduce human backup drivers behind the wheel in some of the vehicles so the company can work on expanding its service area to other cities. Waymo has driven over 35 million miles in the real world and more than 16 billion miles in simulation. That's an impressive amount of data they've collected which can help them improve the software down the road. But which one do you think is more important and reliable? data from a simulation or data from the real world. I'm leaning more toward the real world data, but let me know what you think in the comments. General Motors Cruise Division has about 200 vehicles undergoing testing so far. They've driven more than 1.2 million miles in the real world. GM Cruise also runs a 3D simulator that gets 200,000 miles daily. GM's Super Cruise is used in some of their vehicles today that technically operate at level 2, with adaptive cruise control, steering assist, and lane assist. Just like Waymo, GM Cruise also uses LiDAR and radar along with a number of other sensors and cameras to help the system navigate through the real-world environment. GM has a big team working on an advanced version of its hands-free driving assistance system or ADAS in short that GM calls Ultra Cruise, which will expand its capability beyond highways and apply it to city streets. GM's Super Cruise uses a combination of LiDAR map data, high-precision GPS, cameras, and radar sensors, as well as a driver attention system which monitors the person behind the wheel to ensure they're paying attention. Unlike Tesla's autopilot, users of Super Cruise do not need to have their hands on the wheel. However, their eyes must remain directly straight ahead. During these early phases of autonomy, I think it's important to have precaution and safety systems to avoid accidents when the car is on autopilot. While Tesla vehicles require the driver to keep one hand on the wheel, Tesla does encourage people to keep their eyes on the road at all times when autopilot is engaged. However, this approach has failed to keep people safe in the past with a few accidents reported while the autopilot was engaged. It's important to understand that as humans, we make mistakes and poor decisions. And it's these things that should disengage the autopilot while vehicles operate below level four. When it comes to the safety of the driver and others on the road, this should be taken seriously until the autonomous systems have evolved beyond this point. 
which is why Tesla has added features to the hidden camera located right above the rear view mirror. These new features now enable the camera to monitor the driver and understand whether the driver is looking ahead or looking at their phone. It basically follows the driver's eye movements. This allows them to alert the driver and possibly bring the car to a stop if the driver remains inactive. Today the car will stop in the middle of the road, but future updates may allow the car to safely pull over to the side of the road. And guys, if you're enjoying the video so far, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Now let's continue. Argo AI is a startup company by Ford Motors. It's testing 100 vehicles in at least six cities in the United States. Although Ford invested $1 billion in the company, it's technically still an independent venture. Argo also attracted a $2.6 billion investment from Volkswagen, but unlike others mentioned earlier, Argo AI will not produce its own vehicles. Instead, they will manufacture the self-driving technology for other companies. Initially, they plan to have the technology in fleet-based services such as robotaxis and delivery companies. Eventually, this technology would make its way to vehicles for the general public. Argo AI prides itself on reaching a level of maturity far beyond what other companies of their age have been able to do. But again, their approach is the same as with most other companies using LiDAR alongside other hardware including ultrasonic sensors, cameras, and a radar. Argo AI acquired a LiDAR startup company, Princeton Lightwave, back in 2017. The goal is to reduce the cost of LiDARs and extend the range, field of view, and resolution needed to achieve self-driving capability in challenging urban environments. Currently, Argo AI is using Ford Fusion as the car to do their tests on. This may change in the future with Volkswagen being a major investor in the company. Mobileye is one of the most advanced competitors in the self-driving arena who partnered up with Tesla. Their technology was used in the Model S and Model X before parting ways in 2016. At the time, they were able to detect street signs and lane lines and giving stats and notifications to the driver. They parted ways because Mobileye accused Tesla of putting safety at risk by using their advanced deep learning vision-based AI in ways it wasn't designed for. Mobileye co-founder Amnon Shashua said, quote, no matter how you spin it, Autopilot is not designed for that. It is a driver assistance system and not a driverless system. At the time, this was quite controversial and Tesla replied according to CNBC, that Mobileye was trying to force Tesla to discontinue the development of their own vision system in favor of using Mobileye products in future hardware. After ending the partnership, Tesla scrambled to gain back the functionality it had lost, and this took much longer than they anticipated. But now these two companies are competing for full self-driving. In 2017, Mobileye was purchased by Intel for $15 billion, though it still operates as a separate entity within Intel. Surprisingly, Mobileye still outsources its manufacturing for the hardware from ST Microelectronics. It's important to remember that Mobileye, like many other companies working with self-driving technology, does not make its own cars, but rather provides the necessary technology and hardware to car manufacturers. Their technology currently resides in about 60 million vehicles with ADAS. As long as these vehicles have the full sensor set and chips for full self-driving and a mobile connection to send data back and forth from Mobileye's cloud. This, of course, isn't the case with some of the older vehicles their technology resides in. Nonetheless, they're currently able to collect almost 4 million miles of data every single day. One of the key breakthroughs that Mobileye has accomplished is crowdsourcing HD maps. This is something that Tesla does not use because the main challenge with maps is its scalability and keeping it updated at all times. You see, if the environment changes, for example, there's construction, a road closure, or an intersection changes from traffic lights to a roundabout, the map would have to be updated. According to Tesla, this is unrealistic as updating every possible road across the entire country or the entire world would mean that every minor change in the environment would have to be updated almost in real time. However, Mobileye tries to get close to that by using the current vehicles on the road to map the road itself and send data back to its servers. The images that these vehicles accumulate are processed by Mobileye algorithms with the goal to create a highly accurate roadbook that contains an average drivable path within 3 to 10 centimeter accuracy 
of every road and every lane in the world. Now, transmitting such vast quantities of data would not be possible due to cost, but Mobileye has developed a system that only extracts the key features that it needs to create an HD map. Overall, Mobileye says that it ultimately intends to use the maps as a redundant system to supplement its vision system. But the maps are created using the vision system in the first place, so they're not entirely independent. However, this does put Mobileye ahead of competitors such as Waymo, who rely on HD maps but don't have access to them aside from creating their own. That said, relying on HD maps is more considered automated driving as opposed to autonomous driving because the vehicle can't really figure out what to do in the absence of the map. For instance, a new area or a changed environment. In short, this solution works well until it doesn't and Tesla's solution won't work very well until it does. Last but certainly not least, there is Tesla and they have over 1 million vehicles on the road collecting data for Tesla's deep learning AI. It's hard to tell how much data they've collected so far, but a quick calculation shows that they're able to collect 1 billion miles of data each month. How did I arrive at this number? Well, if we assume that each car drives approximately 1,000 miles per month, multiply this with the number of cars Tesla has on the road, which is over 1 million, and you get 1 billion miles of data collected from the existing Tesla fleet. That's 35 million miles of data every single day, which is what Waymo has collected so far. Nobody comes anywhere near that number, even when you combine them all together. And remember, we're talking about real world miles, not simulated miles. Tesla also uses a simulator to teach the AI, but as I've said before, Real-world data is much more valuable than data from a simulation. Now you might be wondering, how is Tesla collecting all this data? Tesla has a feature called Shadow Mode, which runs in the background when the car is being driven by the driver. How it works is it makes decisions in the background without affecting the driving and then compares those decisions to the driver's actions. This is great in every corner case that would be difficult to predict otherwise. Technically, it's learning from humans and their driving behavior. This data is then sent to Tesla's artificial neural network which will get labeled and then fed to the entire fleet. Basically, the more Tesla vehicles drive, the better their self-driving gets. This approach is genius as Tesla does not have to pay billions of dollars to test their self-driving system to collect data. Instead, Tesla is getting paid while collecting all the data for free. Tesla uses three forward-facing cameras from which one on the left and one on the right work like human eyes for better depth perception. It's the same effect as when you cover one eye which will limit your depth perception and making it harder to estimate the distance of objects. The camera in the middle has a longer focal length which allows the car to see farther ahead. They also have a forward-facing radar that works in conjunction with the cameras to help measure the distance of objects. Tesla also has five more cameras around the vehicle to get a full 360 degree field of view around the car. Ultrasonic sensors on the car help in detecting objects in close proximity to the car, which is very useful when the car is parking itself. So when we compare who has the most amount of data for their self-driving technology, Tesla has a clear lead while others are nowhere near them. And while others are still determined to use LiDAR to create a 3D map of city roads, they fail to address the changing environment in which we live in. Roads don't always stay the same, and there are a variety of scenarios that can confuse the car and disable navigation. While LiDAR does work in real time to scan the surroundings for obstacles, it navigates using an accurate 3D map of the environment. But anytime there is a change in the environment, the 3D map has to be updated. But a vision-based system can easily overcome this. Tesla Autopilot already runs smoothly on roads that it hasn't even driven before. It's even able to navigate through construction sites, though there are a few corner cases that still require some work, the fact is that the car can navigate through challenging and new environments. When Tesla vehicles drive on autopilot, they navigate through the environment like they've seen it for the first time, similar to how we humans drive when we drive through new areas. As Elon Musk has said several times before, the real world is very messy, weird and unpredictable. Teaching an AI to understand the difference between a cat and a dog, or a plastic bag and a tire, Sounds easy to us, but an AI has to learn this from scratch from a set of 2D images. But over time, as Tesla gets more and more vehicles on the road, the amount of data it can collect will grow significantly, which can enable the AI to learn much quicker. The current iteration of Tesla's self-driving software can recognize traffic lights and stop and go accordingly. It can also recognize some traffic signs, traffic cones, change lanes on its own, take the right exit on a highway, 
and the list just goes on. And this just continues to improve over time with over-the-air updates. Tesla also creates a 3D reconstruction of the world around the vehicle just from the cameras alone. Here's how Andre Karpathy, the Director of Artificial Intelligence and Autopilot Vision at Tesla, explained it on the last Autonomy Day. So here's a video going down, I think this is San Francisco, of a Tesla. So this, these are our cameras, our sensing. And we're looking at all, I'm only showing the main camera, but all the cameras are turned on, the eight cameras of the autopilot. And if you just have this six second clip, what you can do is you can stitch up this environment in 3D using multi-view stereo techniques. So this is the 3D reconstruction of those six seconds of that car driving through that path. And you can see that this information is purely, is, is very well recoverable uh, from just videos. And roughly that's through process of triangulation and as I mentioned, multi-view stereo. And we've applied similar techniques, on slightly more sparse and approximate also in the car. The point that I'd like to make is that visual recognition and very powerful visual recognition is, is absolutely necessary for autonomy. It's not a nice to have. Like we must have neural networks that actually really understand the environment around you. So as an example on the left here, um, is that a plastic bag or is that a tire? A, a LiDAR might just give you a few points on that, but vision can tell you which one of those two is true and that impacts your control. Is that person who is slightly looking backwards, are they trying to merge in, into your lane uh, on the bike? Or are, they just, uh, or are they just going forward? In the construction sites, what do those signs say? How should I behave in this world? The entire uh, infrastructure that we have built up for roads is all uh, designed for human visual consumption. So all the signs, all the traffic lights, everything is designed for vision. And so that's where all that information is. And so you need that ability. Is that person distracted and on their phone? Are they going to walk, walk into your lane? Those answers to all these questions are only found in vision and are necessary for level four, level five autonomy. So in order for full self driving or level five autonomy to be possible, the AI operating the vehicle has to fully understand the world it sees around the car and be able to overcome any scenario without human intervention. One thing is certain, any level of automation will make roads safer and reduce the number of accidents. And once self-driving cars do become a reality, the world will never look the same again. Human productivity will go up when we no longer have to keep our eyes on the road. And if you're not too big on being productive, future vehicles will come with entertainment options that we have so far only been able to dream of. While some companies are choosing to make their own self-driving technology in-house and others are outsourcing the technology and possibly acquiring other startups in the process, the fact remains that Tesla stands out from the rest of the companies with their unique approach to solving the self-driving dilemma with computer vision, essentially enabling the AI to understand the world through vision just like we humans do. And as Andre Karpathy said, the roads are made for vision. All the traffic signs and traffic lights, they're all made for vision. So it makes sense to train the AI to understand the world as it is and train it to operate and navigate a vehicle in the environment with safety in mind. This is in no way the easiest or quickest way to level five autonomy, but I do believe this will merit great results over time. Initially, I believe autonomous cars will be used as shuttles in small, well-mapped environments such as airports and large shipping ports. These vehicles will be granny-like, slow-moving vehicles, but once the technology matures, they will be used in public for point-to-point -point transportation and deliveries. And eventually, fully autonomous vehicles will become available to the general public. With Tesla, this will happen in stages through over-the-air updates over the coming years. Let me know what your thoughts are about self-driving cars and AI by leaving a comment below. Huge thanks to our Patreon producers and a special thanks to our power producer in Kukang who helped to make videos like this one possible. And if you made it this far in the video, you are amazing. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Make sure you check out our merch store for shirts like this one. There are t-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, bags, and a lot more. So check out the store from the link in the description. If you own a Tesla, get 10% off on your purchase when ordering accessories for your vehicle from Abstract Ocean by using the code EVSource or the link in the description. And if you want to show more love and support to the channel and get exclusive access to Q&As, early access to videos, and get a look behind the scenes, consider becoming a patron and help the channel grow to make more videos like this one. But if any of these forms of support are beyond your reach at the moment, just remember the most important way for you to support is by watching and liking these videos. And before you go, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss videos like this one. Thank you for watching. My name is Harry and this is AV Source. Keep charging ahead and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe and take care.